Hello everybody and welcome to my 30th Visual Basic in Excel tutorial and this tutorial is going to go back into user forms and looking at a little bit more of um, the kind of design of them and making them look a little bit more uh, professional. Um, it's, I'm hoping after this tutorial you'll be able to make uh, user forms all look very uh, very posh and uh, fancy looking. So, um, the first thing I'm going to go through is um, adding images uh, to your user form. And I'm going to be using, uh, you can either use an image, uh, you can add an image on, um, or, and then if you go into properties. And you go down to picture, then you can choose a picture to be uh, to go on, and then you can um, you align it to wherever you want in the frame, or you uh, can stretch it, or you can uh, like shrink it down, and you can tile it, um, and that's how you add pictures in. Also, um, a lot of the different uh, objects within a user form, uh, so if we're on the user form itself then in the properties you've got a uh, picture and I usually find it's better to go to categorized for when you're using pictures because then you get that all four p different picture things together and you can set a picture um, that will act as the background to the entire user form um, and then you can align it wherever you want and you can stretch it so it covers the whole of the user form um, and you can tile it, um, see with it uh, being stretched it's not going to tile but if we go like that then you've got tiles um, and then that's how you can create quite nice backgrounds to your user forms and then another thing I want to show you is frames and these are quite useful for splitting up your user forms so if you add one in like that then uh, you basically just got another area to work within and you can have the background just drop behind and I don't really like the way it comes as this etched uh, so you can change that if you go across to here then you've got different options so you've got special effect etched as the standard one you can change it to flat uh, so it's just flat you can change it to sunken and uh, I've clicked on the user form now rather than the frame so sunken and that kind of sinks it in a little bit like a text box and I want to go back to the user form because I don't want the user form to be sunken um, but I'll leave it as flat for now you can set a border to have a little line around it um, you've got the caption at the top you can either have a little caption in there you can have whatever you want that comes through uh, or you can just delete it and it will just be a box um, the useful thing about frames is uh, when you add things into them uh, their positioning is based off of its position within the frame rather than its position on the user form and I don't think I've gone through positioning using the properties um, but if you go onto a uh, object within a user form and you go to position then you can align it so it's say 20 pixels from the left 20 pixels from the top um, and then uh, change the height and the width and using that you can um, you can make it really neat and tidy user form if you click onto a frame and you add say a label into the frame and then the position is within that frame so it's 10 from the left of the frame rather than 10 from the left of the user form itself um, so this is quite handy as soon as you move it manually then it gets rid of your positioning um, another quick tip if you click on a user form press F5 brings it up so you can have a look at it it's just a quick way of doing it and then when you click off it goes back into it so press F5 um, F5 is the same as doing run um, just so you know, so in your normal code you can press F5 to run as well. Uh, other tip, one quite useful tip for backgrounds is 
if you get an image such as this one, say gradient, um, and you don't have it uh, normally um, Uh, normally, if you add in um, this, this is an image that is one pixel thick, um, made in Photoshop. Uh, you can use uh, whatever program you want. Um, it's just Photoshop's easy for doing gradients. Um, and you have a gradient, it's just one pixel, so it starts off light and then goes up through to dark. What you can do is just add in this one pixel uh, picture as your background. Um, and this one I believe is one pixel by about 500 um, or something like that. So quite quite um, uh, like pixelated picture. Uh, so it, but so it's going to be 500 different pixels going down. So the gradient is going to be really smooth. However, you're still only taking up 500 pixels because it's only one pixel fix thick and then you're probably thinking well it's not covering the whole of the background and that's where you go to here go to stretch and it stretches the gradient across the whole thing and then it will load up really 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 quick this is also useful for website designers you can quickly stretch um, or tile another way to do it is uh, if you put a tile into tree then it will tile it all the way across and the gradient will look really really smooth uh, without much in the way of uh, load times. Um, you'll see there's it's, it's quite clear and it's quite uh, got quite a lot of clarity to it. Um, and then again, you can add a frame on. You can do whatever you want. Um, just make it look nice. Uh, and that's how you uh, can add images. Uh, see how much time I've got left. Uh, plenty. So. <laughs> On this frame, uh, we're going to just set that to what I had before, so let's give it a border, let's get rid of the caption, and make it flat, so that's nice and smooth. Um, but I don't really want it to be white. Now, before, I've only ever shown you to go to the back colour, drop down, and you've got these different colours. There's not much in the way of different colours there. Um, some of you might have noticed yourselves that there's a little button called palette and this lets you um, choose uh, loads and loads and loads and loads of different colours and uh, let's say nice more multiple colours and if I go into here and make that a bit bigger um, we've just got dark red and what else you can do is uh, you might not want any of these colors again you might want to go for a um, RGB value now for those of you that don't know what an RGB value is it's a um, uh, well there's a, a color that's defined by its amount of red, its amount of blue, its amount of uh, green so if we go into here and we go to more colors and then custom and then you can choose a color and you notice you've got red, green, blue, RGB value um, and it'll give you 11, 11, 203 so we can go for whatever we want so let's go for 214, 00 because that's just easy to remember um, and that's a nice red there so if we go back into our user form. Now we can't really assign it here because we well we've got, we, we've only got these colors to choose from. What we can do is go into the code for the user form so shrink these properties down um, and go view code and then um, go to user form and then uh, initialize. So when the user form is brought up, this is the code that runs. So this is useful for uh, if you've got a user form that comes up and you want to set all of the the choices on option buttons to be false, so none of them are selected, or get rid of any values in any text or list boxes, um, or anything like that. And what else it's useful for is setting uh, colors of things because you can go. Um, user form one dot frame one 
dots uh, back color equals and then you can use that RGB value you can go uh, you can go red as integer so we had two four one green as integer zero zero and then close bracket you just put RGB and then the colors and then press uh, F5 in the, and that brings up our user form and it's got that lovely red and I'm going to take you take this opportunity to show you another little feature that's quite useful for when you're um, debugging uh, or anything like that this is the immediate window and I'm going to use this to get a value for uh, your color as that you can keep on referencing so what you can do in here is you can type in any code say so say message box hello world press enter and it runs that code um, you can also put a question mark to and put in a variable name or um, a sum and it'll do the sum for you straight away um, if you have a variable you can put a question mark and then uh, the variable name um, it's not going to come up with anything at the moment because it's, the variable hasn't been assigned anything um, and the other thing you can do is go question mark RGB 24100 and it gives you this number and I'm going to change this from 0 so say 5 and 52 and then press enter on that line um, and you normally get a little bit of a longer number um, doesn't really match up to the numbers in the RGB value but this is uh, you can use this number in order to if we go into the code then you can just reference this number instead and click play brilliant so that's coming up with a slightly different form of red uh, let's make that a little bit more powerful um, just so it's got a little bit clearer copy that go into the code set that equal to that play and then it's a little bit more orangey you can see um, and what this means is you can assign a variable so dim color as integer um, and then color equals that and then you can just drop it in and you can have it um, as like say you've got a certain company color or something you could have a my company red I just put like a little underscore or something and then if you've got that color set and then you can hand it off to other people and they all use the same color and things like that but if we run this now then we've got that color going there um, so that's just a little bit on how to make your user forms uh, a little bit more um, professional uh, looking. So thanks for listening. I uh, hope to catch you in the next tutorial and uh, please subscribe to my channel.